not to uh, okay. the rock stars. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. First of all, thanks for having me here and thank you all for, for choosing to be here tonight instead of enjoying uh, this, this beautiful city outside with so many things to do. So, uh, I'm Lorenzo Miniero. Uh, I'm, I come from Napoli. I'm a PhD, I, I, I took my PhD at the University of Na I'm Napoli a few years ago. Uh, I'm currently the chairman, uh, chairman of Miteco, a small company in Naples. I'm, I, I really do believe in open source and as you can see, I should probably cut my hair because I'm way too old for that. And uh, Mitico or Miteco, or however you want to call it, I've heard it's called in, in, a, in a thousand different ways, uh, was born as an academic spin-off. So I told you I, was, I got my PhD at the University of Napoli and so did my colleagues at the time. So we started working a lot in, in research at the university and eventually we came up with the idea of, of building a company uh, out of all these. And at first we were focused on, on conferencing and stuff like this, but then we really tried to widen the scope to do uh, multimedia applications in general, always with a strong perspective on standardization and open source, uh, especially uh, within the ITF. I'll explain later why the, it is so important for us. And in general, uh, we do several kind of activities as a, as a small company, so the usual consulting services and stuff like this, commercial support, pretty much uh, any kind of thing that small companies like ours do. But most importantly, we also do the streaming of services. Uh, we, we provide streaming services for live events, for instance, like the ITF. So I'm actually here in Singapore because I'm streaming the ITF that is happening right now. So there are, my colleagues are actually not here because they are still streaming some, some event at the moment. Uh, probably it's ended a few minutes ago, not sure. And we were proud, proudly brewed in Napoli. This is a nice picture of Napoli. I don't know if you have ever been, but it's, uh, it's actually quite nice, as you can see. And um, both my house and, and the office are around somewhere in this picture. I'll let you guess where. And uh, we, are, we actually have a cool partnership with, with Cosmo, the guys that, that you just uh, saw a presentation from. Uh, we built the so-called WebRTC A team, you might, see, you might say, because we, are, we have a great expertise in the server side of things, while they do have a great expertise in the client side of things. And so we found out that actually working together on some aspects could actually solve more issues that we could do on our own. And we actually already worked together on a couple of things that I mentioned in a minute. But uh, let's talk about WebRTC in general first. I mean, I won't focus too much on, on, these, uh, on these slides because I assume that most, most of you will be already familiar with those. But in general, the concept is that you have a couple of peers that can actually interact with each other, first establishing some kind of communication via a signaling and negotiation channel through a web server, for instance, and eventually being able to communicate with each other, establishing a, con a connectivity channel between, in e between each other and create a secure uh, secure channel over which to exchange audio, video, data, and or whatever. Uh, in, it's, it's actually quite interesting though when one of these two peers is actually not a real person but actually an application because it allows you to do cool things that you could not do with just uh, uh, people in the, in the picture. And ideally you might also, let's say, simplify this and assume that this uh, virtual peer that is actually an application might actually also take care not only of the media side of things, but also the signaling, which would allow you to do things like, I don't know, an MCU, some kind of a conference mixer that allows you to mix all the stuff together and allow people to communicate uh, this way, or an SFU, oh, sorry, an SFU where you actually have a different kind of approach where you just relay media instead of mixing it before actually sending it to the other participants, or actually start involving uh, other technologies that are not WebRTC based. So you might, well, for instance, want to interact with the CP infrastructure, uh, with, I don't know, with our TSP-based cameras that, that allow you to do video surveillance or stuff like this, or interact with other technologies like our TMP, Serial Light, and stuff like this. And of course, all this works only if this component is smart enough to take care of both this side of things and this side of things. So as long as this server is able to terminate the media over here, then there's no limit, uh, there's no limit on what you can do on this other side of things. It's pretty much up to you. Which is, where we, uh, which is what we thought about when we started writing Janus in the first place, which is the component that I'm going to talk about today, by the way. And the reason we chose uh, the name Janus for this is that uh, it's because it comes from the uh, Roman mythology. It's the name of a Roman god, the Roman gods of transition. So it, always had, it was a god with two different phases, one looking at the past and one looking at the future, which is incidentally why uh, the, the month January is called like that, just a fun fact if you want. 
And uh, in our idea, uh, the, the concept was that Janus would be the, the, the same kind of approach. So the, the same component with, with, the, with two different faces, one looking at the future, which is WebRTC, and one looking at the past that might be legacy technologies or whatever, like we saw in the other picture. Of course, while still be able to do everything just in the future if you wanted to. And Janus is completely open source. You can find uh, this is the link to the repository. It's uh, it's all on GitHub. Uh, there's there's a lot of demos and documentation available on that website over here. And we also have a pretty much active community as a as a Google group. And the idea was that uh, when we start building Janus, we wanted to implement some kind of a general purpose kind of tool. So something that would allow us to implement pretty much whatever would come come into our, our minds with respect to WebRTC without having to rewrite anything, everything from scratch again, time, time, over and over again, any time that maybe a new idea came to mind. And of course, to do that, we had to come up with some kind of a modular architecture where we basically would have a core that it would implement the WebRTC stack. So all the protocols that you actually need to implement the WebRTC, the WebRTC endpoint, because uh, as you remember from the previous slide, we are talking about a component that acts like a WebRTC peer and so must implement all the protocols that a WebRTC endpoint would implement. And so the core is responsible for all of that. So the establishment of the connectivity, ICE, DTLS, uh, data channels, and so on, plus some additional stuff uh, that might be uh, some more advanced WebRTC-related features. And then everything else is pretty much uh, modular. So it's a module that you can load as a shared object. And first of all, starting from the transport, because we defined the Genos API, so a way to communicate with Janus that is a JSON-based protocol. And you can actually transport this protocol over different uh, protocols as transports, basically. So you can use uh, HTTP or WebSockets if you want to talk from a browser to Janus directly, for instance. But you might also use other protocols if you're using Janus as a purely server-side component that you control on your own, like RabbitMQ, Unix Sockets, MQTT, or whatever else you might want to implement as an additional model without touching Janus itself. But most importantly, the, uh, the real power of Janus resides in the fact that you can also implement the application logic itself as a different plugin, which means that conceptually, and maybe this is more easier to understand in the, in the next picture, the idea is that as a user, you connect to the, to the core via one of the protocols that we've seen before, and you start exchanging messages with Janus via the Janus API. And then uh, as part of this communication, you attach to one or more plugins in the background. Uh, and by plugins, I mean uh, components that implement the application logic in a different way, which means that actually handle the media in different ways. So one component might implement some kind of video conferencing functionality, another component might talk to the, to the SIP world, another component might, do, uh, might interact with RTSP or whatever, these kind of things and so on. And so depending on which plugin you talk with from the, uh, using this API over here, the peer connections that you create, so the media channels that you create with Janus can actually carry different media according to the logic that these different plugins implemented. And so in this case, for instance, we have this browser that, is, that has created two different peer connections over here. This peer connection is actually associated with this green plugin over here that might do some web conferencing or something like this. This other red peer connection is attached to that other plugin over there that might actually forward or let's say handle incoming media from a completely different component that is not WebRTC compliant at all. And Janus takes care of making sure that whatever happens here is actually turned into something that is WebRTC on this other hand. So that whatever you want to, the user to send or receive is actually taken care of by Janus uh, itself. And this allows you to do some, some cool things like uh, uh, combining different plugins to, to create custom and, and, and nice applications. I'll show a couple of examples later on. Of course, this only works if the plugins that we've seen before are actually able to also implement their own kind of messaging, which is what we did, uh, implementing basically the Janus API as a transport for the communication of the plugins itself, meaning that uh, each plugin can implement its own API because, of course, a conferencing kind of application has a completely different set of requirements from a SIP gateway application. They might have uh, completely different messages that they want to exchange with each other and completely different re requirements in terms of events to notify and stuff like this. And this is all made possible by, by this kind of approach that we chose for this. 
And just to give you a simple idea of how you could actually combine different plugins to implement a new application that goes beyond the functionality that is provided by each of the individual plugins. You can think, for instance, about a simple webinar kind of application where you have a person speaking and presenting their own slides online and other people that are just watching and maybe they can chime, they can chime in and make some questions later on. The idea is that you can combine, let's say, even three different plugins to do this. So you might want to use uh, the audio MCU, the audio mixer plugin to handle all the audio parts so that you can easily have people come in and make questions and so on, or even use Zip for the purpose, let's say. You might want to use the SFU plugin for the video part so that you have uh, the user that is contributing his own media, uh, sending his own uh, media this way, and all the other people just subscribe to this. And then for text, you might use some kind of a text room plugin functionality that allows you to do some instant messaging using data channels. Or you could do something like something cooler, like a social TV kind of application where you have a TV broadcast that is still served via WebRTC, let's say a football match or something like this. And then you have all your friends that are uh, watching the same thing as you, each one from their home, and you can uh, discuss together the match, be happy together when someone scores and stuff like this. And in this case, you would use, let's say, the streaming plugin for the TV match, and the SFU plugin for interacting with your friends and so on. And I mean, I won't go much beyond that if not presenting some examples, some real examples of people using this later on, but this is just to give you an idea of how you can actually combine this uh, these different plugins as, let's say, bricks to implement some kind of a more complex application. We've worked a lot on, on some new features in the, recently because this is, of course, uh, what I presented so far is basically the basis of, of how Janus works in general. So uh, the ability to do WebRTC, the ability to, to handle the, the application logic in different plugins and so on. But of course, there's much more to it when it comes to uh, using more advanced WebRTC features or actually being able to do more things with what Janus uh, provides. And one of, the, one of those things is actually quite interesting is the event handlers kind of approach that allows you to do some live monitoring and debugging of whatever is happening in, in Janus itself. And basically this is uh, an additional uh, means to implement a different kind of plugins where you have uh, events generated on the fly about whatever is happening inside Janus. So the core generates events, the plugins themselves generate events, all these events are sent somewhere so that another component can actually process them and aggregate them and handle them somehow. And we have a, an example in this slide that is the Homer application. Some of you may be familiar with it because it's quite popular in the, uh, in the, vo in the VoIP world and now they're working on a, on, a, on a new version called Hepic that is on RTC in general. But this is also the same, uh, the same mechanism is also exploited by callstats.io for their Janus uh, interaction actually. We recently implemented uh, VP8 simulcasting, which works with both Firefox and Chrome. And here you can see just a simple, uh, simple example where I'm publishing my stream as a, simul a VP8 simulcast stream, and here I'm receiving the same stream, but using different spatial layers and temporal layers. In this case, it's not a spatial layer, of course, it's just a different substream, but uh, you get the idea. We did the same thing about uh, with VP9 scalable video coding, and this is one of the things that we actually did in collaboration with Cosmo, with, with Sergio Garcia Murillo in particular. Uh, and, we and we basically implemented the same kind of approach, so something that allows you to, to send a video that is actually composed of several different layers, which allows you as a server to strip some of these layers in order to allow people with with uh, problematic networks, problematic connectivity to just receive part of the, of the streams and not, not all of them if they, are, uh, if they are not capable of receiving everything and still be able to see something. We implemented some uh, support for Perk Lite as well. Perk is one of the, uh, uh, is one of the new efforts that is actually going on, going on in the ITF right now and allows you to implement some kind of a double encryption. I won't go too much in detail about this, but this is also available currently as a, as a pull request, and we also implemented this uh, together with, uh, with Cosmo and Dr. Alex over there. And another cool feature that we have actually started working on right now is the Janus Lua plugin, because um, something that I probably forgot to mention up to now is that uh, Janus is completely written in C. So if you want to implement your own plugin, so your own custom model that, that handles uh, media in a, in a new way, you need to actually know how to code in C and so on, which can be problematic at times. So what we try to do is implementing a new Janus plugin that has all the media manipulation functionality available and implemented in C, but also available uh, via some hooks uh, as a Lua scripting uh, kind of thing. So you can write your own 
uh, application logic in Lua, and this will drive the actual logic in the Janus Lua plugin itself, which, which is already proving to be kind of useful in several different scenarios. Uh, of course, this flexibility that Janus says about all these different plugins implementing different things, different applications, and so on, means that uh, scaling Janus is actually not as easy as it would be for, for a, a general WebRTC uh, kind of server, mostly because different plugins have completely different requirements, and so it's really, you cannot avoid taking the context into account whenever you want to actually scale Janus and say, for instance, I want to have a web conference with a thousand participants or a webinar with 10,000 viewers or whatever. Uh, these have different requirements and these, these all have different impacts on different plugins, which means that you have to always be a bit creative whenever you want to scale Janus in principle. But of course, there are some uh, general notes that you can take into account when you want to scale Janus. So you might do some general load balancing kind of thing if the, if the context allows for it, but you might also do some kind of brokering and so on. More in general though, you might want to take advantage of one of the features that we implemented some time ago that are the RTP forwarders. And an easy way to understand how this works is actually taking the broadcasting scenario into account. So if we wanted to implement some kind of a, a large scale kind of uh, broadcasting application where you have one person streaming and I don't know, a million people watching and so on, of course, you cannot do this with a single Janus instance. You need to use one Janus instance to uh, inject the media somehow, and then this needs to be distributed somehow, and then so that uh, multiple servers can actually serve the amount of people that you actually want to serve. And this only works if you are able to forward all the media around accordingly. And a simple, uh, simple way to do that might be employing some kind of a tree-based infrastructure where you have one Janus instance here as a node, and then whatever uh, relaying infrastructure you want in the middle, something that eventually feeds other, other nodes at the edge that implement, uh, that take care of all the viewers that want, act that want to actually be able to watch something. And uh, this is uh, one of the things that you might potentially do with Janus. There's actually a company that is doing something like this uh, in, in, in the world out there, so uh, it's actually uh, something that might actually work. But uh, this slide is, is just meant to, to make you understand that this kind of functionality might actually be used also in other contexts. So creating a different, creating a, a, a large scale conference application, or let's say even just a conference application where you want people to, to be able to, to geographically access their own region and then still join the same conference and so on, you would need to have some kind of approach like this where you have different inject points that then exchange media with each other so that they can eventually join all the same kind of multimedia application. So uh, I'm, I'm almost done, so I will just take a few minutes of your time now. And these last slides are just meant to show you, uh, to showcase a bit uh, how people are actually using Janus in the wild right now, uh, using different things. So it's not going to be a complete list, but it's mostly going to be uh, uh, different, different scenarios just to showcase how flexible Janus is to actually cover all these different kind of applications. And of course we use these ourselves a lot and, and I'll actually start with this in a minute, but there are actually people that are using Janus in tons of different kind of applications like social TV, video game streaming, surveillance systems, using Raspberry Pis, drones or whatever. So it's, it's really kind of cool. And people are actually also starting to contribute their own code, their own plugins, their own means to access Janus and so on, which is really interesting. But one of the ways that we ourselves use Janus is to stream the IATF meeting. So I was mentioning that I, that I am actually here to stream the IATF meeting with my colleagues. And this is actually a screenshot for the RTC web meeting that, uh, that we streamed today. It, was, uh, it, was uh, it happened this afternoon here, and what we do is basically use Janus as a way to distribute the media, whether it comes from the venue here or whether it is injected from the other participants. So in this slide you can see I was acting as a remote participant in the RTC web, so I had the, the chat over here, I was watching the slides, which was basically a capture of the projector, so pretty much as, as it is happening here, and then we had the camera that was capturing the, the chairs in the room, and we had a remote participant that is Colin Jennings. Here And of course, we, um, since this is WebRTC, we can play a bit with the layouts and, do, and change the way that this media is actually presented depending on the context, depending on, on where you are actually uh, with, the, with the session at this specific moment, so playing with the, with the, with the media. 
The interesting thing is, of course, that you can actually involve multiple remote participants at the same time. And this is, for instance, from a, an RMCAT session from some time ago, where, you, where we had a remote presenter interacting with the people that was make, with the person, Randall Jessup, that was making uh, questions from, from his own because he wasn't at the venue either, and then interacting with uh, the local people at the venue uh, there. Of course, all of this is recorded so that uh, we can then, uh, event, uh, at the end of each meeting, we convert all of these, uh, these uh, recorded sessions in a single media file and we publish it over YouTube so that we can then synchronize it with the chat and so on. This is actually a recording from this week. So we usually, at the end of each day, we process the recordings and then we upload them. Uh, and this is actually very useful for us for another reason as well, and which is the fact that uh, at the ITF, we typically have to control and take care of eight sessions at the same time, which can be quite problematic because we cannot be everywhere at the same time, of course. So we usually deploy all of our stuff in advance before the meeting starts, and then we control everything from, from a single room so that using the same components, so Janus, we, we are able to subscribe to all of the streams, all the cameras, all the, uh, all the screen sharing and all that kind of thing, and we are able to detect if there is any issue, we are able to follow the speaker when they move around and stuff like this which actually made our job much easier. So this is, this is really interesting. And I'm not going to much into detail, very much into, de into details about how we actually implemented all this, but if you're interested in, in knowing more, there is a slide deck on slide share in my, in my account over here. And there's also a video that I, that I made in an interview with the VUC uh, team right now. It's about one hour and a half or two hours just talking about how we implemented all this, so how we took care of accessing all the audio mixer stuff, how we deployed all of these, how we actually use Janus to stream all of these things in real time and so on. So if you're interested, just, just have a look, it's, uh, it's quite cool. But of course you might be more interested in how other people are using this and one cool scenario is, uh, is Skyway. Skyway is a, um, is a team inside the NTT and they're actually using Janus for IoT purposes, for, for the Internet of Things. And the cool thing is that they implemented their own plugin to actually take care of all the communication, serving streams and data channels and so on, which was quite interesting. And it's also open source, you can find it over here. Slack is another interesting scenario. They, they were one of the early adopters of Janus. They are actually using uh, Janus to, to implement all their video conferencing functionality. Some, one thing that you actually found out uh, at Cranky Geek is that they are using a quite old fork right now. So, it's a fork from, they forked Janus a couple of years ago, so they are missing a lot of things, but I mean, I, <laughs> this is a, this is a, this, I'm an idiot, I know, but I like this picture, so I put it here. And uh, I still a very interesting use case, because even though they are missing some of the, the new stuff that we added, they still uh, are a good example of how you can actually scale Janus in, to cover and, and, and serve a lot of users at the same time for conferencing purposes, which, which was uh, quite interesting for us. Mattermost is a, is a kind of a Slack clone, but open source, and they are also using Janus as their backend. TalkTV is a, is a social, social network, a sports social network application that was created by Italian people, even though they, uh, their company is in the, in the US. And they are quite popular in China. They recently published their application there. And it's basically a, a, an application that allows you to, to watch uh, matches together with your friends and be happy together when your, match, when your team scores and so on. And they, are, they also provide official applications for Real Madrid, Barcelona, so teams that are quite large. Uh, this is quite recent. Uh, the Xerces team, you probably know them for their, for their turn servers. They're actually interested in building a, an actual RTC infrastructure in general. And so they are playing a bit with different uh, media servers and they are also starting to play with Janus. They got in touch with us to discuss that and so on. And so the idea is also to to be able to deploy Janus as a service on the Xerces infrastructure so that you can scale, uh, build really large scale applications using their infrastructure, which for us is kind of cool because it allows us to play with the scaling that I was mentioning before uh, using a, a, real, a real infrastructure. Uh, Lenovo also has a, has a new learning application that uses Janus as its backend. Voxbone uses it uh, for their click to call functionality, uh, the click to box application. Convozo is a remote contact sensor solution. They also are using Janus for, for this, which is quite cool. Uh, Viting is a business conferencing solution that allows you to do white labeled uh, web conferencing and it uses a mix of Janus and Asterisk in the back end. 
This is another interesting application. They are currently in beta, but Evercast works on media production. So uh, yet another use case that is actually quite interesting. And they are also, we are also helping uh, them build, uh, build this, which is uh, challenging, but interesting for us. There are a couple of interesting uh, open source solutions as well, like Django, which is a name that I wish I had come up uh, with my, myself because it's really cool. It's a mix of Janus and Gauss. So they basically wanted to create their own clone of Hangouts using Janus. Uh, Janus has the only backend, so everything, uh, audio, video, chat, is built on top of Janus, which was uh, quite interesting for us. There is Silk Server as well, which is a CPEX MPP application server, and they have their own mobile applications deployed that talk to these and so on. And last but not least, of course, the video game streaming is something that is actually gaining a lot of traction uh, recently. And there are actually different uh, video streaming providers that are actually using Janus right now in the wild. One of them is Mixer.com, the streaming service that uh, Microsoft uses for the Xbox. They actually acquired Beam.com some time ago, which was using us, and so they continued to use us for this. There's Bebo, which is, or Bebo, I'm not exactly how it's pronounced, which is uh, a, an application that allows you to stream to Twitch using WebRTC, which is kind of cool. And of course, most importantly, because we have the author here, we have Evassist, which is uh, another uh, video, uh, video game streaming uh, application. Of course, I'm not going too much into the details because Jordan is here and is going to talk about this uh, in just, just a few minutes. So I, would, I don't want to say anything that might actually turn out to be false. And so I'm, I'm basically done. So just to say a few things about what we want to do next, uh, we built pretty much uh, everything with respect to the WebRTC implementation, but there are a couple of things that are still missing. So one of these is uh, improve the renegotiation mechanisms like ice restarts that we do have as a pull request, but it's not out there yet. But most importantly, multi-stream. So we don't implement neither uh, plan B nor unified plan at the moment, and we want to implement unified plan as soon as possible. It's, uh, kind of a priority for us. I already mentioned the Janus Lua plugin that actually gave us the idea that uh, if, we, if, we make it, uh, if we make the life for developers easier by using Lua, we might actually do the same for other programming languages. So we might expose ways to control a Janus plugin via JavaScript, equal Python, or whatever else. This, this might open a lot of doors for us in the future. And as I was saying, we want to keep on working on, on improving the scaling solutions for Janus. So making sure that you can actually uh, if whatever kind of application you have in mind, there are ways for you to, to use a lot of uh, Janus instances together in order to, to build this. And for, for this, I'm pretty sure that our uh, partnership also with Cosmo will help us do this. Uh, Exercise is an interesting kind of solution. And in general, this will allow us also to, let's say, uh, uh, eventually come up with even some kind of a platform as a service solution that is Janus based or something like this. But most importantly, I mean, and the main reason is why I'm here is uh, I'm really interested in, I was really interested in making people aware of Janus in the first place. So if this is something that interested you, if this sparkled your interest, just install, install it, play with it, play with the demos, try to write your own applications. I mean, um, just play with it and let us know if it's actually helpful or not. And I'm probably way, way over time, but I'm done finally. So if you have any questions or comments, I'm, I'm here to take them. Thank you.